welcome to the uh, April 6th meeting of the Michigan City Common Council. We are calling this meeting to order as of now. Um, Ms. Nylip, on the roll call, please. Can we, can we stand to the Pledge of Allegiance? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's stand and do the That's Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance Plagues to the flag of the United States, States of America, America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, God. with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Always got the pass, behind the back pass, helping somebody out. I apologize for my striped shirt, but it's going wild tonight. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Okay, Ms. Nylib, on the roll call, please. Mr. Dabney? Present. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Mr. Mack? Present. Ms. Deitch? Present. Mr. Don Presolinski? Present. Mr. Paul Presbylinski? Present. Mr. Simmons? Present. Ms. Jagus? Present. And Ms. Tillman? Present. We have eight present and one trying to get in. Okay, and uh, just a uh, <coughs> note of decorum here, please remember that the rules of order will be applied here tonight. Um, there's an expectation for possibly a lot of uh, public uh, comment. Each councilman has two and only two opportunities to speak on each agenda item. The author of the legislation goes first and has the option of closing with their second uh, speech. Five minutes per councilman on the first comment, three on the second. Uh, parliamentarian, please keep tabs of uh, all of the uh, rules of order in that area. On the public comment, please limit your comments to three minutes. And also participants can type in their name and address in the chat area to be recognized. Uh, that, and you can raise your hand also. Uh, hit the yellow uh, button that says raise hand there, but you must either state your name and address or type it into the chat so it's easily identified and put for the record. And with that, approval of the minutes. Uh, are there any corrections, deletions? Or Mr. Okay. President? Yes, sir. I make a motion to accept the minutes. There's been a motion to accept the minutes. Do we have a second? Support. Second, second and approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Are there any standing committees this evening? Yes, I'd like to make a brief report from our uh, streets and alley work uh, workshop. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm going to try to do my best on the, the attendance. Uh, I believe that uh, Angie Deich was there, and uh, Dahlia Zegas was there as the committee, and also Sean Fitzpatrick, uh, and I believe Mr. Simmons, or Councilman Simmons was there, and Jeff Wright was in the uh, also in the uh, audience, and I I think I'm not sure, but I think the mayor was there, but I don't think he participated. And if I left anybody out, I wasn't uh, focused. I wasn't really sure who was all at that uh, meeting besides a. Uh, uh, comp, the council committee because I had to leave early to, uh, to go to work and I don't believe that we uh, there was any vote on anything there was a lot of discussion on the uh, uh, legislation that was introduced on uh, the TIF money in uh, the MVH funds being used with the uh, TIF money in the um, we spent a lot of time on that and uh, rehashed uh, re rehashed that all again. So <clears throat> I think the the main uh, focus was that we need to create 
a more cooperative spirit with the uh, administration and with the uh, city council on work be, to be needed within the wards. So <clears throat> we will be, I will be conferring with Jeff Wright on his schedule and to look at having a inform, in, informational meeting to discuss this whole picture of road work. And and because I don't want to get into a bunch of legislation on telling them when they, we can do that on telling us when the applications are being uh, submitted, when the uh, commit, when, so they're, we're aware of what's going on and that we don't have uh, any shotgun approach to this road work. And uh, when these uh, are sent out, these applications are sent out. Now we could do that and uh, hopefully we won't have to do that. But uh, I mean, that was my kind of my thought and focus from that meeting. I know some people are adamant about not passing that legislation. And I'm all, like I said, I'm open and I think the committee's open for suggestions, but we cannot go through these cycles and not have any input as council members. I think it's imperative that we have input. And the last thing that I, I do wanna say, because Cleveland Ave was brought up, is at our first workshop that we had in uh, the earlier part of the year, or I believe in December, the December, no, it might've been February. We did not take a vote we discussed Cleveland Ave. We did not take a vote on doing any work on Cleveland Ave. So with that being said, I don't know how that came about. And uh, I, th I think that, I don't know if that application has been submitted yet. So with, with that, I think that we got a gist of what's going on. I think everyone has a gist of what's actually going on here. So hopefully we'll get some cooperation with uh, the city council in uh, getting this road work because it's important that every time that we get in these cycles and we use that MVH fund, we lost it. The, the main focus is we lost it for work in the rest of the wards. And I, I'm adamant about how I feel the TIF should support their areas. And I'm working on a, uh, uh, I'm working on a uh, report on to show people how much money has been uh, financed through the TIF. And I think everybody understands after that last meeting what maintenance is because people have tried to create a subversive uh, discussion about maintenance and reconstruction. So for the record, maintenance is fixing curbs, painting lines, sweeping the streets, and things like things of that nature after the initial construction has been done, the reconstruction. And I believe that Mr. Myers has been very um, helpful in the discussion on what maintenance and reconstruction is. So if there's any, Angie, you, you want, I, I'm done if you want the floor, Angie. Don't, don't we have this uh, coming up as the bill? Because I don't want to turn the committee report reports into 
uh, duplication no, I, when the bill comes up. We're gonna no, I'm, I'm just saying what, what was discussed at the meeting in... Uh, Okay, you know, okay, Angie, did you have more on the standing committee? Yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll go back and turn in help turn something in, Paul. I'll get the uh the list of people that were uh, at the committee and and submit something to the clerk's office. So um we did the only recommendation that we, we did make, Paul, was that um we table it to get some more clarification um from uh attorney Meyer. Um, on um, the, the few items that came up um, as far as the uh, the maintenance piece and then the um, MVH, seg segmenting the MVH from um, those areas and how they calculate uh, the, the mileage within the city. So uh, we recommend it, because I know you had to leave that, we, we table it so that we can get more information on the um, MVH calculation and um, one other item. So um, that was the recommendation um, that me and Dahlia um, voted um, on just to table it until we could get some clarification from Attorney Meyer and from um, Attorney Saranek. Um, so I will uh, help type something up, Paul, and, and right. make sure that you uh, can take a look at it before I right. before we submit it. All right, thank you. Okay, are there any other uh, standing committees? Any other standing committee? Oh, Sean, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Yeah, uh, yeah. So on April first, uh, thank you, Mr. President. On April first, the uh, finance committee met here in a minute. So. Chairman Fitzpatrick called the meeting to order at 4.01 p.m. Committee members Fred Belinsky and Tillman were present. Chairman Fitzpatrick made the committee aware that Controller Hoffmaster will not be available for the entire meeting. The claims were as follows. $4,650 from the Board Development Fund for a purchase order approved by the Board of Works to D. Haddad Events LLC for operation of the farmer's market for the 2021 season. Councilman Fresvalinski stated that he believed the pricing was fair for the services to be rendered. Uh, Councilwoman Tillman agreed and asked if the individual was the same as previous years and the call for service was open, or and if the call for service was open to all or a direct appointment. Controller Hoffmaster replied that the service provider was new. Uh, there was a brief conversation about the process about selection, selecting a service provider. A motion was made by committee member Tillman to recommend the council approve the claims. That motion was seconded by committee member Presbolinski. The committee voted unanimously to approve the recommendation. Uh, committee member Presbolinski expressed his support for the ordinance establishing deadlines for the preparation and submission for the proposed budget to the council and then posed a question in regards to amending the salary ordinance for a position that was set in the 2021 budget. Uh, assistant, Park and, assistant Park Superintendent Easton responded that uh, compared to similar positions in other departments, the Park Department's wages were lower. She further noted that this request was made to previous and current administrators for the past several years and was brought forth at this time by a vacant position due to a retirement after 14 years of service. Committee member Press Walensky noted that other departments with higher rates of pay were also looking to hire and was unsure about the ability to cover all inequities in pay at this time and further noted that the budget was set and we should stick to what was already approved. Controller Hoffmaster excused herself from the meeting. Chairman Fitzpatrick as well as committee member Tillman expressed their disapproval for the lack of representation from the controller's office. Committee member Tillman stated that any potential increases be, should be discussed at the 2022 budget hearings. Councilman Dabney noted that we amended the budget to hire and increase the pay for lifeguards. He further noted that additions were made to the agenda that were uh, untimely. Assistant Superintendent Eason stated that the requested amendments weren't a uh, request, that the requested amendments run a request for additional funds and reference the pay rate of similar positions across departments and express the need for equality. 
Chairman Fitzpatrick inquired about the rate of pay for the park superintendent and assistant superintendent, and if, if they were equal to other department heads. Assistant, assist, assistant Superintendent Eason referenced the salary study. Committee member Press Belinsky asked who prepared the park department's budget, and Councilman Dabney expressed that the park department uh, budget was ultimately the will of the mayor. Committee member Till in, inquired about the mayor's desire to increase the pay for these positions. Assistant Superintendent Easton stated that the, these requests were denied for the last seven years by the mayors. It was further discussed that there were excess funds for seasonal positions due to COVID and that those rates were not competitive with com, uh, compared to similar to some local retailers. Chairman Fitzpatrick asked, uh, asked if the council amended the budget and the mayor decided not to increase the pay rates, would it then revert back to? And the response was potentially would. Uh, Councilwoman Jigas comment that, commented that in her opinion, it was only a transfer and would help them attract candidates. Committee member Press moved not to recommend the approval. That motion was seconded by Chairman Fitzpatrick and unanimously voted on. Discussion began regarding the proposed ordinance to establish deadlines for the preparation and submission of drafts of the proposed annual budget. Chairman Fitzpatrick expressed the need to increase the time the council has to review the budget without being so close to the deadline for submission. Committee member Tillman asked to co-sponsor the ordinance. Committee member Trezwilinski expressed his support for the, uh, for the ordinance as well. Councilwoman Dice noted a communication with Controller Hoffmaster in reference to the changes in IC codes and the July 6th proposed deadline. Uh, and some information may not be available to them in a timely, timely manner. Councilman uh, Dabney also chimed in to that effect. Final discussions were in regards to the primary scholarship and event coordinator positions. Councilman Simmons uh, inquired about the primary scholarship coordinator salary as well as the former event coordinator's position and if those salaries were reverted back to the general fund. Councilwoman Dice inquired about the uh, controller's email response to that question. Councilman Simmons referred uh, the email to uh, refer to the email that will be attached to these minutes. Further conversation about the primary scholarship position and the duties of the position based on the needs of the scholarship applicants, as well as the potential for overlapping services in the mayor's office. The meeting was adjourned at 5 8 p.m. This concludes the, the Minnesota Finance Committee. Thank you, Councilman Fitzpatrick. On uh, to the claims docket, the Riverboat Boy Development Fund uh, at zero for it and there was a purchase order on the void for $4,650 and that was for a farm, mar, farmer's market manager. manager. Uh, motion to approve the purchase order. Motion to approve. Second. 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 Patrick and second by Ms. Tillman. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The claims docket is approved. Um, reports of special or select committees. Are there any special or select committee reports this evening? Any select uh, special committee reports this evening? Okay, on to others. Are there any other city officers or department reports this evening? Any other city officers or department reports this evening? Okay. On to petitions. Uh, the following petition was received in the clerk's office on March 25th, 2021. Petition uh, P, Ms. Nyla, uh, can you read the petition? So petition P, 121 Woodlawn Holding Zero LLC, Rose Series for rezoning R2B to R3B, 312 East 8th Street, parcel number 46-01-29. 431-019.000 uh, uh, Michigan City, Indiana. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, are there any communications this is? Paul, you're not on mute. And, uh, who's on mute? Am I on mute? Okay. Um, I can hardly hear you, Mike. Okay. Ah, all righty. 
Let's see if I turn anything up. Well, let's see. I'll speak louder. Are there any communications with you? Correspondence was received in the clerk's office on March 22nd, 2021 from Mayor Dwayne Perry regarding his veto to resolution number 4805, a resolution of the Common Council of the Michigan City, Indiana, expressing lack of confidence in the leadership of Mayor Dwayne Perry and requesting his resignation. Uh, yeah, can I have that read? Can I have that communications read in, entire, in its entirety? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, dear members of the Common Council, on Friday, March 19, 2021, I vetoed Michigan City Common Council Resolution Number 4805. I took the action because I disagree fully with the every statement contained in the resolution and content, accuracy, and intent. Also, my position that the resolution is unnecessary, its sole purpose being dis discredit me and influence me to resign from my position as mayor, which I will not. Immediately after the two incidents referenced into resolution took place, I took reconciliatory actions, personally apologizing to everyone direct or indirectly affected and began undergoing counseling and training in diversity and sensitivity. I have apologized to everyone offended by the incident several times, stating that I'm truly sorry. I have also committed to continue to receive diversity and sensitivity counseling and training, definitely pledging that so that such acts of negative behavior by me will ever uh, again occur. It is because of my statement above detailing the points of disagreement I have with the resolution number 4805 and the corrective preventive me measure I put in place to ensure no negative behavior by me in the future that on March 19, 2021, I vetoed this resolution. Thank you. Respectfully, um, Dwayne Perry, Mayor of Michigan City. Okay, I guess we're on to the vote of uh, overriding a veto. Is there a motion to override the veto? Uh, Angela, Angie Nelson Dyke. Motion. And we um, have so, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Well, you know, your, that veto meant nothing. Um, this was a resolution of no confidence from us. It was not legislation. I'm not sure, um, you know, after signing it and then coming back to veto it really doesn't mean anything. There really isn't any action that has to be taken for it. Um, you know, uh, I know several council members have strong feelings about his comments. Um, about none of it being true, I beg to differ that um, most of it is true, if not all of it. Um, and reconciliation and all of that, if you do things in public, um, you should do all that. You should make your, your apologies in public as well as I'll read a, a letter from a, a resident at the end of the uh, meeting, but um, there was really no need for us to override a veto for a resolution because it meant nothing except for putting a stamp on something um, after the fact. It's, it's our feeling, it's what we um, believe, um, and we can do it, but it's only for purposes of, because the veto meant nothing. I mean, so... I and I agree. And this is all symbolic, but the resolution was symbolism. The veto was symbolism. And uh, the final symbolism would be the last word in this, this debate. If we don't vote, I think it would leave this out there without the final door closing on, on the symbolism. And we can move on to, to whatever next. And if we don't have a motion to uh, vote, then we just won't vote. Uh, is there a motion to vote on uh, override of the veto? Seeing there is none. Um, do we have any questions uh, from the council? No. I'll continue. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, correspondence was received. Pardon? Correspondence was received in the clerk's office on March 11, 2021, from Dub. Doug Babcock regarding the BZA denial letter from their June 30th, 2020 meeting. Correspondence was received in the clerk's office on the 16th 
from Ms. Tanisha Clark, Executive Director, EEO Officer regarding diversity training. Correspondence was received March 16th from Controller Hoffmaster regarding E-Suite e module purchase from Tyler. Addressing direct deposit procedures. Correspondence was received um, in the office from Anthony Lewis on March 19th regarding the mayor's re resigning. Correspondence was received on March 22nd from the Fraternal Order of Police, Michigan City Dunes Lodge, number 75, regarding the scheduling contract negotiations. Correspondence was also received on the 22nd from George Duby regarding the mayor resigning. Correspondence was received on the 22nd from City Engineer Jeff Wright regarding 2022 resurfaced candidate segments. Correspondence was received on the 25th from also to the mayor from Jeff Wright, city engineer regarding project updates. Correspondence was received on March 29th from Ms. Joan Chumley regarding the mayor resigning. Thank you very much, Ms. Tyler. Uh, now, will you please read the first ordinance on first reading by title only? An ordinance on first reading by title only establishing deadlines for the preparation and submission of drafts of proposed annual city budgets and tax levies to the Common Council. And this is introduced by Mr. Fitzpatrick and co-sponsored by Mr. Paul Presbolinski, Ms. Deitch, and Ms. Uh, Tillman. And does the author have anything to add this evening? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, so uh, this was uh, brought, I brought this forth because the past several years with me being on the finance committee and on the council, we've always gotten uh, the, the proposed budget almost down to the wire where there's, there's no room for us to do our due diligence and properly uh, review what is, you know, what's around a $50 million budget that we have a couple weeks and a few days of looking through each department's uh, line items to try to accomplish all this. And uh, the, the goal of this is to extend the time period in which the council has to review the budget. Uh, the, the dates and deadlines are uh, up for discussion and can be uh, worked on to, to see what fits best. But I know that there's a, um, a mindset out here that it's not possible for the controller's office to get us everything we need in a timely manner. And I wholeheartedly and completely disagree with that. There's always gonna be some information trickling in and there's always gonna be some things that you could refer to previous years to reference to kind of gauge where you need to be as far as budgetary uh, means. Yes. But to, to specifically say that things can't be done in a timely manner and uh, we get them just a mere, maybe a month or so before it's time to turn them in. It, it seems like it, if it's not a, a, a I don't, see, I don't see any wrong. A malicious the attempt. Weather. Now the weather's on there. Uh, if it's not a malicious attempt to, to keep us from actually doing our due diligence and looking at everything, it's definitely a favorable one because uh, it, it, there are many times where we, we are rushed through the budget hearings and uh, not all of our questions are asked. We don't have time to go back and forth and really make the proper adjustments to make sure that the uh, the funds that are taxpayer funds are properly distributed throughout the throughout the city and that the city is running at its optimal pos uh, potential. So uh, I, th I think that this is something that's desperately needed and uh, we, we discussed it briefly at the previous finance committee meeting, uh, which is something that uh, I plan to do as long as I'm the chair of the finance committee. When things that are financial in nature, I think we should have some of those discussions prior to the first reading or them actually being referred to the finance committee so we could get a jump on it and not drag some of these things out longer than necessary. But this one I think is so, so important that it, it's already been uh, listen to a little bit. We didn't have the um, the full uh, opportunity to get a lot of the questions uh, fielded because it it was uh, it was at the last minute when this was added to the agenda. And Controller Hoffmaster or no one else from her office were there 
to uh, answer some of the questions, which hopefully we can have a future workshop or another finance committee meeting to get the rest of those questions answered. But I, I just don't believe that uh, these deadlines are uh, unreasonable and it's impossible to get the budget to us with uh, more time to spare than uh, prior to the submission. The last two times we've had to have special council meetings because we were within time for our uh, other meeting because we meet every two weeks. So we would have missed the deadline both times had we not had a special meeting to uh, go through and approve it. And we still had questions that were outstanding. So uh, I just think it's something that's desperately needed and uh, definitely willing to have a conversation to make it work so it's uh, it functions properly. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Um, okay, um, does the public have any comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the public? Comments or questions from the public? Public comment is now closed. Uh, any questions from the council? Councilman Dabney. Yeah, this is a couple of comments. And, and I understand we all had this uh, discussion uh, last year for the budget hearings. Uh, and we talked about trying to get things done earlier. And it's not a, an attempt to deceive the council or anything like that, uh, because I know they receive information where they go meet with certain people as, as far back as August to get information in, that's used to set up the budget. You can't set up a budget if you don't know what your revenues are. Um, and so, they're calculating expenses that come out through the end of June um, and things have to be reconciled so you get a proper dollar amount of, of what we're using to, to base our future on. Um, so we're looking at a, a $54 million budget. And if we continue to try to push this back to get it earlier, we're just kind of flying blind uh, because we'll be getting nothing but total guesses uh, without all the information to build a proper budget. Um, you know, last year, you know, I tried to move these up as early as possible, and I was actually going to try to get to the, the beginning of September, uh, and we ended up not moving until I think it was mid-September uh, on the budgets because, you know, one of the budget, uh, one of the, the finance committee members was on vacation. So we did try to move that thing up to, to give it more time. Um, and... Maybe because it's what I do, you know, I, I kind of specialize in, in, in some of this stuff and what I do. Uh, but, you know, I understand that not everybody does. It's like me trying to do one of you guys' job, uh, which I know I could not do effectively um, because of your expertise in that. Uh, but I did not, myself, once again, I'm talking for myself. I can't speak for anybody else uh, because we all have our own lines of work. But, you know... I, I had plenty of time to get through those, those budgets and ask the questions before we actually went into the meeting. So I didn't show up with a, a bunch of questions, but I did have questions, even though that is my line of work, I still had questions. So we're pushing the envelope and I understand we're trying to get it uh, to be done as early as possible, give everybody you know, a chance to look at it. But we do run the risk if we go too early, we don't have proper revenue figures and we don't have things reconcile um, in order to get the proper, you know, expense totals and things like that, which could lead for a disaster of a budget. And hopefully we come to something, you know, where we kind of grab in the middle here and, and move it up where it's earlier and give people more time to look at it. Thank you, Councilman Dabney. I'm, I'm gonna just throw something out because it's just a question and maybe when the rest of you guys talk, you can answer that or add this to it. But uh, I don't think we operate in a vacuum here in Michigan City. And uh, I just, is this the dynamic, uh, exactly what happens in every other city that it's uh, done on this date and it's late and the timing butts up against the council? Because it seems like the accounting requirements from the state are based on a solid date. So each city council has to respect that. And it just makes me wonder, uh, is it built into the cake uh, for every city to be rush, 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 rush? Or do other cities have something uh, similar to the ordinance that Mr. Fitzpatrick is talking about or some other mechanism to satisfy 
uh, all parties in, in getting out information. Somewhere, I just don't believe that this is uh, uh, our um, the, the first city in the in the state to actually figure this out. It has to be some place that actually do this. Uh, Councilwoman Dykes, you had your hand up. Yeah. So the reason why I I uh, signed on too is there are some things we can do. I, I do manage budgets at work, um, and if you have where you 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 are existing at right now, so you have your your baseline. And then you have to prioritize and set priorities on things that you would like to add if you if you get additional money or subtract if you get less money. So I, I, I think I just think that we should start having those conversations sooner. Um, I'm not necessarily saying and, and I think with the finance committee meeting, maybe we can have uh, more time and 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 one thing I would recommend is that Councilman Fitzpatrick make it later in the day so that um, s some of us don't get off early enough to be able to attend. But um, you know to have that conversation around you know stipulations if the draw you know comes later, we we understand that. But I I do believe and. Um, I don't know. I, I don't recall being rushed like this when I was on the council before. So, um, I, you know, last year was COVID was our first year. Um, but I do believe there's some things that we can do in advance and have certain things sooner. And every department, they've been doing this for years. Uh, they should know what they need or don't need and have that laundry list of things that they can share and discuss that we can up front say, well, that's not something we think we want to fund. I mean, I, I think the conversation, that process can start sooner. I, other cities do it. Um, there are cities that run up on, you know, deadlines. Um, last year was a, a, a weird year with COVID. Um, it may be a weird year this year with COVID. We don't know that. All I'm saying is that we should look for opportunities to to create a vehicle that is working in the sense that we know the deadlines for the state and we're committed to that. If the county delays us so many weeks, then it delays this so many weeks. I think there's some some stipulations we can put in, um, to, you know, to to react to issues that may come up because issues are going to come up. So yeah, this is the law, but maybe we put in stipulations if. You know, the draw comes late, then we extend the timeline or whatever it is. But I just think that we should put something in place and and investigate what some other cities are doing. I just think that um, fire police, these big departments, the park, they know what they need and don't need. So you either add additional things if you get more money or subtract things if you get less money. And um, I think there is a, a way to do that. And I don't see why they can't present that to us, um, at least to start that conversation, even if there are changes or information that isn't um, that we don't have yet. So um, those are just my comments. And I look forward to the Finance Committee meeting to talk more about it. Uh, Councilman Don Fredzielinski, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, I, I, I agree somewhat with the ordinance. Uh, that, you know, we could, with the council should be able to get it earlier than what we do in September. And then right away we schedule the meetings and then we start going through the meetings and then this happens, that happens. And it's always a big rush. It's always been a big rush. Uh, I agree if we can get it backed off and we can get them earlier, that'd be great. And like Councilwoman Deitz was saying, that every department knows what their needs are going into the budget. And they know how much money they have to spend. And then they turn it into the controller. She cuts their budget, tells them they can't have it, and they take it back. It's never been any different than it was last year. Well, one thing, and I'm going to have to... Uh, talk to the uh, controller 
is Yvonne sent it out to all of us this afternoon. Well, I opened it this afternoon. Could have been sent out yesterday. But, you know, she's saying that in the, in the state rules and regulations here that, you know, if we're looking to get this in July, that the controllers that the state sends out, uh, she says here, we receive information from the state needed, needed to prepare an annual budget all the way through the middle of August. So the controller's office is receiving information on how to put their budget together. So I think what we need to do is get her understanding of what those needs are and what information they send out and how critical it would be in passing this type of legislation, if it's going to be detrimental to the city or if it's going to be good to the city. But for sure, we need to get the city controllers input on this because this is what this ordinance is going to affect her and her operation and how she puts the budget together. So I think we need to consider that sentence that I just read. Thank you. Councilwoman Tillman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to add on as being a co-sponsor um, to this ordinance is it's no different than the county of LaPorte County doing their budget. We're under the same time frames, deadlines as the county. Um, we can always contact their auditor's office if anyone's ha have any questions or concerns. I as well um, handle budgets for my position of where I work. And, and with that being said, also just to bring awareness that if the department heads do not have their budgets prepared or ready to be presented, the controller at that point has the authority to present their budget off of prior projections of what she, what he or she believes um, should be their budget. So that's something that we also need to keep in mind. So there is a window, there is a time frame um, that department heads have to have their budget submitted to the controllers. Everything is on a time frame. It's not a whim of what other count, what other states are doing. Model what the county's doing. It's working for them. So we can always look at look at their scheduling and how they're doing it, and it's done in a timely fashion. Um, we're what in April now, so June, July. They talk with their department heads. They're getting things together. They're reaching out. Um, some counties or some departments. Um, is being audited, um, getting things prepared for their budget year. So it is doable right here in Michigan City. So it's just that we just need everybody on board. We definitely need to make sure that those department heads, as um, Councilwoman Dyke said, that they have everything that they need in their budget and maybe their wants. And when they present it and they have all those that that's tied into that meeting or when they have that conference uh, consultation with the mayor and with the controller, that they ask for what they need, not, not after the budget or in the following year for appropriations or to refill or we have funds available to fill positions. Ask for it then. And then we know what we're working with. And so we'll know how to determine what needs to be adjusted or not at that time. Thank you. Okay. Um, any comments from the public? Oh, any comments from the public? Well, the first was the authors, right? The authors of the bill first. Paul was a, oh, go ahead. What, what are you saying, Andy? You already went to the public. Oh, okay. It was okay. Any other comments from the council? Paul? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mack. I wanted to say that. <clears throat> Similar to what uh, Councilwoman Tillman had touched on in uh, Councilwoman Deitch and <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Councilperson Fitzpatrick, this legislation, whether you modify the date or whatever you do, is we have to do something because we have to 
start preparing this document. It's not a big, um, I don't understand. There's a, I feel there's a reluctancy. There's a pushback here on, on doing this. Somebody might have to do something earlier than they anticipated. But I think it's good, as <coughs> Councilwoman Tillman addressed, that and <coughs> other people who are signed on to the ordinance, other cities do it. The county has an approach that they do it. And I just want to say, for the record, is that I, I think that I do understand the budget process. And I, I remember being on the council before it wasn't, we had bleeps, but it was like last year. That was, uh, I was like <laughs> kind of, uh, to say it mildly, I was kind of beside myself what was what was happening because it was like we couldn't even ask questions and, or we were getting shunned because we asked a particular question. But I will say this, for the record, I served six years as a trustee of Local 6787 and we had to do quarterly audits for the international and that was over people's pay and property and to make sure that the books were balancing and we we're also regulated by the Department of Labor. So if we can't do a, even a quarterly update here with the computers they have to know where we're at on finances, something's wrong. And if that needs to be put in the ordinance, I guess we'll, we'll have to address that because that will help you out on how you're working through the year. So if that program that they have doesn't have that, something's wrong on what they bought with all the technology we have in today's marketplace. So I, I appreciate the uh, comments that have been made earlier, but I do believe that this will help instead of hinder. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Seeing there's no other comments, this ordinance will be held over on second reading at the April 20th council meeting. Ms. Nyla, will you please read the second ordinance on first reading by title only? The ordinance on first reading by title only, amending the zoning map of the city of Michigan City, LaPorte County, Indiana, for property currently owned by Woodlawn Holdings Zero LLC, row series from R2B to R3B. And this is introduced by Mr. Dabney, Ms. Deitch, and Mr. Don Presbolinski. And do the authors have anything to add this evening? Councilman Dabney. Yeah, uh, real quick, this is just a, a rezone that she read from R2B duplexes um, to R3B, which means you can do multi-unit. Um, this is the property over there on 8th Street, the old library. Uh, they're going to be turning that into apartments. Um, and just wanted to, this is a really good project for the city to get some development down there um, on 8th Street. But um, just wanted to make a note that this did come out of the planning commission with a favorable recommendation uh, for passage through the council. That's it. Any other authors? Uh, no. Any comments from the public? Uh, yes, if I may, uh, Anthony Novak, I'm an attorney with Newby Lewis, Kaminsky and Jones in Laporte. Uh, I represent the petitioner here, Woodlawn Holdings. First of all, I want to thank the three sponsors. Um, as Mr. Dabney did indicate, this is a rezone um, of R2B to R3B, favorable recommendation unanimously from the plan commission. Um, the rezoning, um, it's only one parcel over. It would actually be an R3B already. Um, but briefly, it, it is the old library constructed in 1897 with the overall plan of doing long-term uh, residential rentals, not short-term, long-term, at least a year, um, converting the, the various rooms, four studios into four apartments. Um, and certainly here for any questions that you guys have, but the two developers involved um, have also been involved, involved with the uh, Uptown Center. Um, they bought that and just recently renovated that. 
as well as the old burger bar or bride church next door. So if anyone has questions, I'd w I'm willing to entertain it, um, but it's a good project and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you, sir. Are there any council comments? Any comments from the council? Councilman Fitzpatrick. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Novak, for being here to uh, answer any questions. Um, now, is, is there any historical value to this piece of property? Um, so that was brought up at the plan commission. Um, so I'm kind of speaking secondhand, but this property is not on the national register. Schuyler indicated, but with an Elston Grove, and I'm probably going to be stating this wrong, but with an Elston Grove, it's got a certain rating of either outstanding or something else that Schuyler indicated. Um, but he, but, but our clients have gone in front of the historical review committee, I believe. Um, to preserve the outside, they're going to do some changes to the window, but structurally, they will not be making any changes. So I hope that gives a little bit of guidance. Yes, thank you. Councilman Don Presbylinski. Yeah, at this time, uh, thank you, Attorney Novak, uh, for the information. And yeah, this did come out of the Planning Commission. I know you said a unanimous vote, and I didn't know there were nine members to the planning commission, but yeah, it was a nine to uh, nothing vote. And I think it's gonna be a uh, beautiful addition to that neighborhood, to the downtown area. And I hope all my council uh, colleagues are gonna support this when we come to vote on it. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Okay, if there are no other comments, this ordinance will be held over on second reading at the April 20th council meeting. Ms. Nyla, will you please read the third ordinance on first reading by title only? An ordinance on first reading by title only, creating section 2-411 in chapter 2 of the Michigan City Municipal Code to create an ARP coronavirus local physical recovery fund to receive funding awarded to the city through the American Rescue Plan Act ARP of 2021. And this is introduced by Mr. Mack and Ms. Deitch. And do the office have anything to add at this time? Councilman Deitch, I'll let you go first. <laughs> yes, this is just to um, create the account uh, for the the funds that we are receiving that um, we'll be discussing over the next month, but it's just to create the actual account where the money um, would be housed. And uh, that's exactly what I was gonna say. This ordinance basically just creates a fund that the budget uh, to house the, uh, the money is gonna, that are gonna be sent by the government. But I would uh, encourage everyone in the public to look up the American Rescue Plan um, to begin to have those conversations on, on what can be done. Uh, there was not uh, any latitude or rigor room, so to speak, or local politics involved in picking out these four areas uh, that this money can go into. Uh, the buckets of money must be distributed into these, uh, the money must be distributed into these buckets of funds, but how much is distributed into each fund is the portion to where, where our negotiations, our conversations, our deliberations are gonna be so important. Um, how much is, uh, you know, uh, th those those conversations and discussions on how much goes into one, each, each of those departments are gonna be deliberations based on people's visions for the future of the city, based on equity, based on fairness, based on needs, value, and uh, the intent of the funds and what they're purposed for. My hope is that uh, we're gonna give the public and especially the leaders of credible organizations in our community uh, a lot of time and encouragement to uh, read, comprehend and understand and don't just wait for to hear it here in the council. The purpose of these funds, what they're meant for and what they can do. Um, I'm looking forward to that. It's a game changer for the city and the county and the state, you know, for the whole country. Um, so that was my only comment there. Are there any comments from the public? Any comments of, from the public? Seeing there are none, are there any council comments? Councilwoman Tillman. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just one, um, what the, how the funds will be appropriated and um, put into this account, will there be a overseer other than the controller's office that will um, continue to monitor these funds and how those funds have been spent? From everything From I've read, what I give her, everything I've read, uh, mm -hmm. Federal government has serious guidance on these funds. Mm -hmm. uh, they put rules into place for uh, this particular state that would actually, that have in the past taken federal money, uh, put it into this account, taking existing money out of that account and gave tax cuts for it. Uh, those uh, things are uh, not gonna be able to be done. These, uh, these funds are gonna be audited going in and, and especially going out. Uh, that they're going to be spent on the appropriate uh, things. When you're dealing with the federal government appropriation of funds, it's a little bit different than uh, than our local local deal. So it, it sounds like it's really, really a secure process. Okay. And I was just asking because I thought I read something um, that was issued out that indicated that um, once the funds have been dispersed um, to the cities, um, that that and setting up the funds that a third entity or, or would be a overseer of how those funds would be dispersed or to make sure that to, to monitor how those funds have been paid out and for what? Well, this step that we have followed, we're gonna create an ordinance. Okay. We have to create an ordinance that uh, has to fit into the parameters of what the federal government said these funds are able to be spent on in the first place. Now that is a wide, wide, uh, latitude that the government has allowed um, from sewers and roads to some right. to daycare assistance. We have to intelligently have these discussions uh, to make sure that the vision for the city uh, is unified, I guess, in, in a way. But just as long as we go through the process, I think we'll come through a, a break with these answers. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Fitzpatrick. Uh, thank you, uh, President Mack. Is there a time frame in which these uh, funds have to be distributed? I know that this is uh, ordinance just to create the fund, but once the funds are uh, given to us, do we have a specific time frame to spend them? Councilwoman Dykes, do you want to answer that? Sure. Um, we have until uh, half of it has to be spent by December 31st, 2021. And then the other half will be dispersed next year to to spend the remaining amount. So uh, the state is um, because we're less than fifty thousand population. The state uh, kind of is the overseer for us, and then um, that money will be dispersed sometime in May, and then we have to the end of the year to spend it. Um, that eight point whatever million it is. And then next year we'll get another disbursement that will be used for 2022. And, uh, the, the reason why I asked that because, you know, as stated earlier, we just voted no confidence in Dwayne Perry and I still have an issue with anything in regards to the disbursement of these funds that he has input on. That's my personal opinion. That's going to be my position until this is all over with. And I just wanted to state that for the record. I still have no confidence. Uh, Councilman Paul Um <clears throat> As uh, Councilwoman Geich was explaining, the uh, funds have to be uh, spent, uh, the second distribute. The first distribution is not stated in the ordinance. The second distribution is to be spent by December 31st of 2024. And I would like to be added as a sponsor of this ordinance. And uh, if I if I may, and I, and I, I think that what Mr. M uh, what Councilman Mack has said and what Councilwoman Angie Deitch has said that we need to come up with a plan and uh, 
and has to have to uh i guess uh my uh perspective on this is to be a uh uh comprehensive and looking at the verbiage in the original document is talking about payments to eligible employers for their eligible workers who have performed essential work. And it also talks about impacting industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality and small businesses and, and including assistance to households. So we have a lot of work in front of us, there's no doubt, a lot of work. And to fairly uh, distribute this money because I we have a lot of essential workers that we need to figure out how, when, why so thank you I, I and like i requested i would like to be a co-sponsor this legislation please thank you and is there a problem with that? did you have your hand up no councilman don president yeah mr uh president i'd like to also be added as a uh, co-sponsor and uh just in closing my comments on this uh just with a little levity behind it is I want to thank uh, the President of the United States for this wonderful gift to the city of Michigan City of $16 million for us to spend and improve our city and our quality of life. Thank you. All right. Councilman Dabney, did you have your hand up? No? Okay, Councilman, Councilwoman Dykes. I forgot one thing. So once we get through the planning phase of it, there will be a resolution that we will have to put forth as um, the council with with all of the uh, buckets and how much um, we do still have to do that. So this is the account set up. But once we get through the planning phase, there will be a resolution that we'll have to bring forth um, at our first council meeting in May um, on how we spend the money. Yes. So we do have to do that. Um, I just want to make sure everybody knows that um, part of that process is a resolution where we outline where that money is spent. And that's on us, exactly. Any other questions or comments from the council? Um, seeing that there are none, we are... Ms. Nyla, will you please read the fourth ordinance on first reading by title only? An ordinance on first reading by title only, amending ordinance number 4549, commonly known as the 2021 salary ordinance to increase the hourly rate of pay for the administrative assistance in the park department. And this is introduced by Ms. Zegas and Mr. Matt. And does the author have anything to comment tonight? Yes, uh, I do. So um, what happened is this, uh, the park, park department's payroll clerk retired and they need to hire another secretary to replace her. The pay that was established for this job is way lower than any other payroll job, a similar job in the city. So they say they want to bring the pay up so that it's comparable to the other departments and it's not going to cost the city any money because they have money in, a, in a seasonal work that they can use. So it's not costing the city any, it's going to make the department work better, more efficiently, get a better employee. So to me, it's a very logical thing. It's just a clerical thing for us to fix. And I've also sponsored this and I'm in agreement with uh, that for the reasons that uh, Dahlia just uh, alluded to. And I'm, I'm also a staunch believer in the $15 minimum wage. And it's very, very, extremely difficult for me to argue uh, on the side of keeping $8 people at eight, nine at nine. And if I can't get my whole enchilada, I, I'll eat it a bite at a time. I just, I, I, I am I am a strong proponent of $15 minimum wage and uh, the, the entire economy or structure, uh, whether it be the nation or the park or the city needs to 
reassess itself after making those moments. And those are hard decisions that need to happen, but I'm going to always be on the side of at least a, a, a fair and honest minimum wage for every American that works, uh, especially 40 hours a week. Um, so with that, uh, does the public have any comments? Any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, are there council comments? Councilman Dabney. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to be added as a uh, sponsor on this ordinance. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Dalia, did you uh, did you see somebody, or was there a public comment? There might be somebody waiting to speak. Mr. Lansford. Bill Lansford's in the left-hand corner. Hello. Sorry, did I miss Bill? Hi. I get him. Okay, Phil. All right, I just want to thank the sponsors tonight and also thank you for considering their quest tonight and for the Finance Committee's evaluation last Thursday, April 1st. Uh, just a real brief summary, we have the opportunity to increase the hourly wage for the Park Department admin to make it more equitable with the other city departments. The position is equal in responsibility to the other payroll positions within the city, but the hourly wage is much less. The position is vacant due to retirement. We'd like to increase hourly wage and get on par with the other city departments and to help with recruiting the best candidate available. We can cover the additional expense within our existing budget, so there's no additional funding is required. And just on average, um, the other seven admin payroll departments within the city, the average pay is $1,675, and this one is $1,386. Thanks again for considering it tonight. Thank you, Mr. Latcher. Sorry about that oversight. Uh, Councilman Sean Fitzpatrick. So uh, thank you, Mr. Mack. Um, so yeah, we did discuss this at length at the uh, last finance committee meeting. And the question I posed when we were talking about what it was just mentioned that uh, we'd like to increase all the wages. I mean, in a perfect world, I would like to increase all the wages as well, but I don't think we can afford to increase everyone's wage up to uh, equitable level. And also, the budget was already set. These requests were denied by the mayor and previous mayor. So it seems like it's a it's a uh, attempt to circumvent the will of the administrator, which is what their function is. Our function is to uh, work with the budget that we present by the mayor and make the necessary adjustments at that point. And since we'll be going into the budget cycle coming up here pretty soon, hopefully sooner if we're able to get the uh, the deadline increase, then if these are still the desires of the park department or park board and the administration, I don't see why delaying that until that time so it can be properly adjusted into the, the budget for the previous year. And uh, another question I would like to know, who's doing the payroll now? Uh, if there's a vacant seat and no one's there, then who is handling that position and why can't they handle it going forward? Or why can't someone else who's doing it uh, assist with that, with their, with their uh, duties if it's being done right now? And when we're talking about equal pay, I, I just don't believe that Every department head should make the same money. Every person that does a specific job for a specific department should make the same. You got other things that are in fact uh, experience, um, longevity. Uh, you know, it, it, it's too many uncommon variables to say that everyone should just make the same thing. And, and I'm not against raising people wages. And if we want to make the decision to raise everyone's wage, because I make this point every year at the budget that uh, we shouldn't be paying people $7 an hour. And here we are actually discussing taking the funds from the seasonal workers to increase the pay of one single individual. So next year, when uh, COVID releases and we're back uh, doing something that resembles our old norm, where are we going to get the money to pay the seasonal people at that point if we uh, divert it somewhere else now? So uh, I don't I don't disagree that the the pay should be adjusted. I just don't think this is the right way to do it. And I don't think now is the right time. Thank you. And I do want to add one more thing that the finance committee did uh, vote unanimously to recommend that this not be approved. Thank you. Councilman Don Prismas. Yeah, Mr. President, uh, I, I disagree 
uh, with this ordinance, and I will give you uh, my give the council the reasons why. And uh, just to go back real fast to Councilman Fitzpatrick's uh, statement there about the seasonal workers and them making I don't know, eight fifty, nine fifty, whatever it is. But I, I believe I can. My memory serves me right. During the past election. I heard a lot of candidates get up and say, park department people need more money. We need to raise those seasonal salary raises up to at least $10 an hour. And we don't even look at that. We don't even look at that. And, but now we're gonna turn around midway through the budget, midway through the budget because somebody retired and they knew that this retirement was gonna happen. It just didn't happen overnight that it was planned, and now halfway through the budget, we decide, okay, we need to raise some money. We're gonna take it out of the seasonal salary line item. And we just took money out of the seasonal line item for the lifeguards. That's where they got their $5 dollar raises. So how much money is even left in the seasonal line item? Does anybody on the city council know how much money's left in that account. I don't think we do, but yeah, we're gonna say, go ahead and do it. I don't even know if the mayor knows how much money's in there, but he's agreeing to the raise. You can't do that. You can't do that. And to say that we're just taking it and we're shifting it from that line item to these employees, and it's not gonna have any effect on the budget is not true. Because in 2022, how are you going to replenish that money, right? You got to take it from the tax monies we receive, and you got to put it back in the budget, and you got to put even more money back now into the budget. I'm not against raises, and I'm not against people making equitable living. What I don't agree upon is halfway through the budget cycle, now we're coming. You know, the lifeguards was one thing because that's a summertime type of activity. But these other jobs are annual, they go year round. We knew back when we did the budget in 2021, if they didn't ask for raises back then, and I don't know if they did ask for raises because I wasn't on the finance committee, but if they didn't, I don't know why. And maybe the park department needs to take a look at that and see why they didn't do it. But I just can't, and I don't think it, in, in, the, in my closing, I don't think it's fair. It is not fair, and I'm sure my council colleagues will agree that the person that had that job and had that job for seven years couldn't get a raise, but no more than 1% or 2% that the whole city was getting. But now, since they retire, we're gonna give the person coming in that job a $1.50 an hour raise. What does that tell you about people that, you know, the, the person that had that job, does that make them feel very good about what the city did to them? They, they gave them a 1% raise, and now they're gonna give them a buck and a half raise? It just doesn't make, it doesn't make sense it's not good business. If you do it now, you're doing it for every other department that wants to come halfway through the budget cycle and they want raises and they want this and they want that. And let, let's make it justifiable. We just can't say, well, we're gonna raise it a buck 50 because we think we can get better candidates. I can guarantee you, I guarantee you, the person that had that job was one of the best professional employees Michigan City has ever had and ever worked in the park department. I know her personally. I don't know if everybody does, but I know her personally. So I don't think the dollar 30 cents an hour is gonna make a big deal. And I don't think we should be doing it the way we're doing it. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Shannon from the park department had a, wanted to answer a question that was posed earlier. Ms. Eason? Yes, just for clarity, it's not our payroll position that's vacant right now. It's our administrative um, office assistant. 
So to answer that question, who's doing payroll? We still have a payroll clerk. Um, who's filling the office assistant position? All of us. So we are all chipping in. We're all cross-trained. Um, and then just to clarify this point, it's been stated that the last two mayors have turned this raise down. That's not true. Mary, Mayor Perry was approached with this raise when he took office in 2020 and agreed that the park staff should be equally paid for equal work. However, COVID hit. So the city you know, was in financial straits and it was put off. So I just want that clear that Mayor Perry and the city controller were both in favor of this. Um, I wanna say thank you for your time and consideration at your finance committee meeting last week. And I would like to uh, repeat what Councilman Prozbolinski said that Michelle Glidden, um, she worked for us for 14 years, very dedicated employee, great human being, and she'll be dearly missed. So again, thanks for your time. Thank you, Councilman Paul Prozbolinski. Thank you. Well, I guess a lot of my, a lot of the discussion has been answered with, with, uh, uh, Shannon uh, talking about the uh, former employee. And uh, so we can wrap ourselves around COVID around a lot of things. But I will say this is that this should have been in the budget, but and it doesn't make it right right now because the way I personally feel about it is that that uh, uh, individual left that office and they're going to give somebody to take the job, uh, that increase. And I just don't, I don't get it because, or I get it, but I, <laughs> you're taking all this money out of, you're proving a point to me, you're taking all this money out of seasonal and how are we going to get any seasonal workers if you you got them down to seven fifty an hour? And I, isn't that what? And that's a question if Shannon can answer that for me. Is that what their pay scale is right now, Shannon? Okay. Well, or fit Mr. Lasford, because sorry, I was unmuting. Is the our our seasonal? Okay, I don't want to get into a back and forth. Our seasonal employees got a $2 an hour raise in 2019. We did ask for a raise for this particular position in seven budget cycles. However, it never made it to the council for discussion. As the council is aware, the budgets are prepared, approved by our park board, then they go to the mayor and the controller who can cut them and then they go to the council. So that's why you never saw it. So who actually cut this? Who actually cut this in the budget? Let's get to that last year and previous years since you've been there, Shannon, for the history of it, of this job. It was submitted to the mayor and the controller's office. The raises were not approved at that level, so they never got presented to the council for approval. <laughs> That's really okay. That I guess. It, that that answers my perspective on this, but I still think it should have been, as I stated at the finance committee meeting, as I still think that this should be submitted with the <clears throat> salary ordinance to the park. The park board should resubmit it, and you know, see see where we're going to go with it. I don't I don't feel that we should be changing the budget right now, and. Uh, I, I think it's a very, very perplexing for you and you're telling me what a great employee this person is or was and the salary kept getting cut and I didn't and over seven seven different budgets or eight different budgets, Man, there, there. To me, there's something there, uh, really. So I would uh, ask that the park department resubmit this 
at the budget hearings. And, uh, you know, I, I actually feel uh, dismayed about this whole thing as I'm hearing all the history about it. It, it really it really amazes me. But another thing is that didn't we just, this is a question, didn't we just take and create a position at park maintenance and use the money for the seasonal? We eliminated a position out there to incorporate the salary of a maintenance director, Shannon? We did not eliminate a position. Um, we moved, we have nine full-time maintenance staff. We moved one into a director position that was eliminated due to budget cuts, I want to say four years ago. So we just reinstituted our original structure. So no, we did not lose a position we promoted from within. Yeah, but that, how did the increase in the salary come out? Wasn't that taken out of seasonal, if I remember correctly? Yes, you are correct. Okay, so there's more money taken out of seasonal. That's just for informational purposes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Councilman Dabney, or Councilman Fitzpatrick, did you have your hand up for a second? Are you, you good? Yeah, I had just to reiterate, uh, Superintendent Easton said that Mayor Perry didn't cut it, but it never came to us. And if she presented it, that would have meant that he cut it. Just clarifying that. Okay, any other comments from the council? Any other comments from the council? I'll just uh, close by saying, you know, I, I think Michigan City's future is bright. I think our future budgets uh, aren't uh, the type that need to be skimped. I believe corporations are coming here because they see growth. And I believe that uh, we should be incorporating every opportunity to fix and adjust historical unfairness, hiring practices, uh, pay disparities that show up at every opportunity. The people that work for us, uh, you know, that I've worked in corporations and I've had budgets and I've had the latitude to move money from this spot to that spot. And the last thing I was trying to do is uh, make sure that the, uh, you know, that the letter of the law, you know, gets upheld. If the budget and the future budgets are looking bright, I would make sure to try to take care of uh, the people that actually do the work first. And, and those were that those were just my uh, methods that I would use. And I and I'll continue to use those methods uh, at every every opportunity. Um, Councilman Presbolinski. Yeah, uh, a, a question for Shannon. How much how much do the seasonal workers make? They're paid a range. Um, I'm on vacation, so I apologize. I'm at home right now, but the range is from, I believe, around eight dollars an hour to ten forty, depending on the position. So it was an average of a two dollar an hour raise across the board in 2019. Thank you. I can send that information to the council. Sure. Yeah, when you get time. Okay. Thank any you. Other comments? Oh, comments from me. Actually, it's in the salary ordinance. Yeah, Councilman Dabney? Yeah, uh, this is gonna be an interesting budget cycle uh, because we had, I mean, we were cutting pay and cutting secretaries, boards and commissions for $2,600. Now we're telling them to go back and ask for raises. This is gonna be interesting. Um, I hope we all remember that we, we told them to ask for the, the top of the pay range when they submit these, these budgets. I hope they do uh, make it to the finance committee uh, for them to consider these raises when they come around, um, and we see how it handle how they handle that. It is going to be interesting. Any other comments from the council? If there are no other comments, uh, this ordinance will be held over on second reading at the April twentieth meeting. Ms. Nyla, would you please read the first ordinance on second reading by title only? 
an ordinance on second reading by title only prohibiting the use of MVH funds for constructing or repairing streets within the boundaries of the city uh, TIF district. And this is introduced by Mr. Paul Presbolinski, Mr. Don Presbolinski, and Mr. Fitzpatrick. And does the author have anything to say this evening? Authors, one of the authors. Uh, Paul? I, uh, at this time, I have had uh, two conversations with two council members, so I would like to table this um, for two meetings. No, yeah, two meet to our next meeting in. Uh, so we can look at some different language in the uh, ordinance. It's in the ordinance that uh, add to it. Or so it's been that would be our next meeting is April twentieth. So when is our next meeting after that? May fourth. May fourth. Is that okay with you, Mr. Fitzpatrick and uh, uh, Don? No more discussion. Yeah. You're ready. Made a motion and seconded. Absolutely. Uh, Thank so you. There's been a motion and a second to table this topic. Uh, uh, Ms. Nyland, on the roll call, on the vote. Mr. Paul Presbolinski? Aye. Ms. Tillman? Aye. Mr. Dabney? Aye. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Ms. Steich? Aye. Mr. Don Prezelinski? Aye. Mr. Simmons? Aye. And Ms. Jacobs? Aye. We have nine in favor and no one opposed. We'll be tabled till May 4th. All righty, Ms. Nyla, will you please read the second ordinance on second reading by title? An ordinance on second reading by title only creating second creating section 2-2 to require that all Michigan City elected officials utilize electronic direct deposit. And this was introduced by Mr. Dabney and Ms. Zegas. Um, please note at the March 2nd, 2021 council meeting, this ordinance was tabled on second reading until the city controller reported back in writing to the city council which was received on March 16th. And does the author have anything to add this evening? I request to be removed from this. Okay. Come after we be that. removed as a sponsor. Correct, after, after getting more information, I wanna be removed as a sponsor, thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah. Councilman Debbie. Yeah, I was just gonna say, or can we make a motion to remove this from the council based on the new information that we got from the the city I mean the city controller in the email that said with new patches and, and new updates to the system that it can't be done to create uh, one paper check. So did we just make a motion to remove from the agenda? Would that be proper, Gail? Um, point of point of order, Mr. President. If I may, yes, go ahead, Don. Okay, what what has to happen now, since both the sponsors decided to have their names removed from the ordinance? Now, the president has to ask the rest of the council if there's anyone willing to pick up and be a sponsor. And if no one is going to be a sponsor, then I believe it just dies for lack of having a sponsor. That's correct. To remove your name from the, Mr. Dabney, is that what you requested to remove your name? Yeah, that wasn't what I was requesting, but that's the procedure that it has to happen, and, and yes. So, okay. Uh, so, both uh, Councilman Paul, yeah, President. I, I have an additional comment or point of order. The author can remove it off the table at any time also, according to the council rules. <laughs> You don't have to remove your name. So, move it from the table. Well, this is Jim. 
<laughs> yeah, if you want to have the ordinance die dead, you know, not for further proceedings, not just tabled, then what the process that Don mentioned is correct and that both of the sponsors have withdrawn their names. The president needs to ask if anyone on the council wants to pick up sponsorship. If the answer to that is no, the ordinance is dead. Thank you, sir. Seeing that both sponsors have removed their name, is there any other council member that would like to pick up this legislation and move it forward? Seeing that there are none, it is dead. Um, there are no comments here. Okay, on the new bill. Uh, FYI, the mayor is requesting the advice and consent of the members of the Michigan City Common Council regarding the reappointment of Mr. Daniel Messina as a member of the Michigan City Port Authority Board. Term will be again immediately and expire March 14th, 2025. Under unfinished business, we have nominations. The council has one appointment to the Michigan City Scholarship Exception Committee, term expiring 5-1-2021. Incumbent is Mr. Ryan Labis. Labis. Uh, were there any applications received in the clerk's office? Are you on mute, uh, Ms. Nyla? For the scholarship, uh, none. None? Okay, uh, so, uh, do we vote here tonight? Not, to, not tonight, okay. Um, is uh, the incumbent on, would they, the incumbent like to speak? Are they on the call? Nope, doesn't sound like it. Okay, second nominations. Nominations, the council has one appointment to the Michigan City Sustainability Commission, term expiring 521. Incumbent is Andrea Johns Davis, um, any other applications uh, received in the clerk's office? I did receive uh, one from her. Okay. Open nominations. Um, Nominate uh, Andrea Johns Davis to the position. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Second, please. Okay. Thank you. We have a uh, second by Councilman Don Presbelinski. Yep. Um, Thank you. Before we go to the vote, uh, is it proper for me to allow her to speak? Uh, Andre, speak. Uh, yeah, I think you've done an outstanding job in a trillion areas of the community that I keep up with, so I won't be late with the point. I'll let you speak for yourself. <laughs> well, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Quick nod, my first unmuting. Thank you so much. Um, well, um, I'm Andrea Jans Davis, and I'm here. Um, seeking reappointment for the Michigan City Sustainability Commission. And I'd like to also take a brief moment to update you on what I've been working on for the commission um, currently. So I'll start with those projects really quickly. Um, I've been writing a feature on Facebook uh, titled Caught You Being Green, where we highlight local individuals, organizations, and businesses for their contr contributions to the environment. I'm also writing mini features or shout outs um, in between the main features. Um, also, um, kind of my big deal right now is that I'm working on our annual Earth Month event. Um, due to COVID, we can't really get together. We wanted to last year and that was canceled. So this year we're going to do a contest on Facebook. Um, so it will be Caught You Being Green Earth Month 2021 contest. Um, it's free to anyone to participate and it'll run from April 17th to the 30th. And we're asking um, everyone to show us how they celebrate Earth Day by taking a few pics or videos and um, then a short description. Um, commissioners will judge and we will award actual prizes for first, second and third place. Uh, the goodies are uh, donations from local restaurants and sustainable products. Um, our amounts are at least 150 for first, 100 for second, and 50 for third. I'm still getting the exact amount, so that's where we'll say with that, that plus, it will be the value. Um, the details for the event will be on the uh, Michigan City Sustainability Commission Facebook page. 
for um, my non and our non commission, non family members and close friends, of course. Um, and I've started to uh, begin planning the 2022 Earth Month event. So um, that was just a quick update. I was asked to go ahead with that real quick. Um, so I would really like to thank you for nominating me, um, Dahlia, and, and everyone for considering me um, for a reappointment. Um, I've already provided the paperwork, my qualifications, but I would like to express my feelings. Um, oh, wow. It's been the honor for the last two years. I really do love this. And um, um, I've lived my life as sustainably as I can for at least the last 20 years with recycling and gardening and teaching my kids and ethical shopping. So um, to be appointed to the commission to uh, to help cause and affect actual environmental change really, really, truly has been an honor. Um, tree hugging is in my soul. Okay. So um, I would like to continue making an impact um, as much as I can, especially locally. And um, thank you again for listening and uh, for your time and consideration. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, so are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? I've asked three times, seeing there being none. Nominations are now closed. Are there any comments? No, and we're not voting on this now, are we, are we Gail? Or we're not voting on this now, are we? We are? OK, on the, on the roll call. You're on mute, Ms. Snyder. You can, uh, don't have to take a vote on this. You can just um, ask. Are you taking a vote or are you waiting till next time? No, we can do it. Let's, let's do it now. Let's get it done. Okay, then say all in favor and- All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 There are none. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Davis. Davis, I, I aspire to Thank you. I'm, I'm not close, but <laughs> aspiration. Okay. Congratulations, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I really, truly appreciate it. I'll right. stick around as long as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, comments from the public. Are there any comments from the public? Uh, this is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. There's been a lot of talk about having Cleveland Avenue resurfaced. I think that absolutely needs to be done. That, Cleveland Avenue, that's one of the roads that leads up to Michigan City High School and the Marquette Athletic Complex. We have to host other schools for our events. Um, you know, just last month, we hosted nine different schools for the, for the sexual and regional rounds of the IHSA boys basketball tournaments. And it leaves a really bad impression for the city and the school system. They come in and the roads are in really bad, deplorable condition. So I think... You know, when it comes to our schools, I think uh, the, the PACER rating kind of needs to be thrown out the window. You know, there's been a lot of exciting news coming out of the school system with their capital projects. As we speak right now, they're laying down new turf at Ames Field. They're, they're, after 50 years, they're probably going to install new bleachers at the high school gym. They're going to resurface at the, the South Parking Lot of the high school, which has been bad for about, about, about 15 years now. And uh, something else I wanted to talk about. Um, is there anything that we can do as a city to get our airport shuttle bus service back? We've been without that for, for over a year now. A lot of people depend on that for work, travel, a lot of uh, disabled, senior citizens, elderly people need to use that. You know, you can take the take the South Shore and ride the CTA. That's a real hard trip for people that can't do that. Um, the other thing, I'm really happy to see we're going to start having farmer's market again every Saturday morning at 8th and Washington. It's going to be like the farmer out in Springfield Township across the aisle of the female goat. It's going to be a real hoot nanny. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy. I really appreciate the comments. Any other comments from the public? Any other comments from the public? Comments from the public? Public comments are now closed. Um, council comments. Any uh, council comments? Councilman Don Presbyterian. Thank you, Mr. President. And I have uh, I have two comments tonight. And the first one, I'm going to leave the best news for last. Okay, with the great Michigan City 
green, clean uh, organization. But first of all, and let me get my uh, notes here, is I want to address the letter that was sent to the city council that the mayor sent to the city council as far as vetoing our resolution. And when I read that, I just, I, I just couldn't understand the reasoning. And I don't know if my council colleagues understand the reasoning behind what he's saying in this letter, but I can't because, you know, he, he uses the sentence, I disagree fully. I disagree fully. And, and, and not only, yeah, I'm not only am I talking to my council colleagues here, but I want to talk to the public so they understand what this letter, what he's trying to say. He says, I disagree fully with every statement that was contained in that resolution, number one, for content, which means he didn't agree with anything we said. So it tells me that he's not admitting that he did one thing wrong <coughs> talking to the black ministers, the way he addressed them, the way he addressed the chief of police over this whole matter. It's he just doesn't get it, all right? For content, accuracy, and the intent. And personally, this, this is degrading to all the council members' intelligence, <laughs> their dedication, and integrity for what we stand for as public representatives for the public. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you know, and so, and I'm just gonna, I just wanna read a couple. I just wanna read a couple of the things so what he's saying is he totally disagrees with what we put out. And he's saying that whereas the press release from the mayor's office dated March 2nd, 2021, publicly criticizing Chief of Police Deion Campbell for an annual solicitation that benefits our community and office police officers was unwarranted and unprofessional. So what he's saying by what he did there to the chief of police, it wasn't wrong. He's okay with it. We're the ones that are wrong for bringing it to the forefront. Same thing with, you know, how he dealt with the black community, the black ministers, that he does not admit to anything he did wrong. And I think that this is nothing but a true slap in the face to the city council, to the citizens of Michigan City. And again, again, I agree just like Councilman Fitzpatrick said, uh, you know, the mayor should resign, get it over with, and forget, the, forget this letter that was totally uncalled for. Now, an, another item, Dealing with the uh, with the mayor, uh, and this comes out of the Indiana Code 364-5-3, the powers and duties of the mayor is that on an annual basis, he's supposed to provide a statement of the finances and the general condition of the city to the city legislative body at least once a year. Now, since I've been on the council under this mayor, I have not received a uh, state of the city address yet. And we're already into April. Uh, I know the previous administrations were doing this in February already. And I don't know, you know what the wait is, but we didn't get one last year and we, we haven't received one once this year. And what I'd like the mayor to do, and I know he's not listening right now, but to respond back to the city council within the next couple of days of when we can expect 
they have a state of the city address, both from a what's going on in the city and from a financial standpoint. I think we've given the mayor enough time to, uh, to get that done. Finally, the good news, the good news, the happy news. And I mentioned it two meetings ago about the great Michigan City Green Clean organization and the great work uh, that they have put together. And again, the organizers were Nora Riska and Mike Colburn. And what, I'm not gonna say the, the group, but what they have inspired people to do. The inspiration, there's been over, according to Nora, there's been over 200 people that have just gone out and cleaned up areas that they feel needed to be done under no direction from Nora or Mike to say, hey, go here, go there. Uh, there's people who just feel, feel it in their heart that they wanna make a difference. They want their neighborhoods to look nice. They want their community to look nice. So there were, and they have addressed over 75 properties right now in town. And uh, just to name a few, and I know it's getting late, but they've done work on Springland Ave, Pearl Street, Ohio Street, Edgewood, the Uptown area, Franklin Street, Paz Road, 9th Street, 8th Street, Woodland Ave, Jackson Street, Harrison Street, Shoreland Hills, Barker and Krieger Middle Schools, Risky Ave, Cleveland Ave, Martin Luther King Drive, Wabash Street, Pine Street, and on and on and on. So I just wanted to uh, mention that to the public, over 200 people. Oh, and the next big day, the next big day, besides every day, if you just want to go out and do some of this little cleanup work, it's going to be Earth Day. It's going to be Earth Day, April 20th, is where we're going to have another Hallmark Day for Michigan City. Uh, so if you can find an area or get a group together, three or four friends, and just go out and clean some place up, uh, that's what that's what we're looking for. And uh, you know, to make to make the difference in Michigan City, we all have to be the difference. We're the ones that have to be the difference makers, and also. This group, I put them in contact with Chris Vandenberg from the uh, Code Enforcement Department. And now we have some real power behind this group to go into the businesses and facilitate the cleanup uh, of some of these larger box stores that needed the help. So Code Enforcement is behind this effort also, and they're doing a great job. So with that being said, Let's keep the momentum going forward and let's clean up our uh, city the way we want it to be cleaned up. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Presbylinski. Dahlia Gigas, please. Yes, on the same theme uh, with being green, uh, the tree board will be meeting later this week, but uh, they are planning to do a tree giveaway. The trees have already been ordered, so I know it's gonna happen. I just don't know the exact details yet, but it will probably be May 1st. So on a Saturday, it's going to be a drive-through pickup of native trees that you know are ready to plant. So I'll have a little bit more details for you uh, after the tree board meeting. But there is a lack. I mean, we don't have a city forester right now, and you know, green space is very important. And underserved communities need green spaces as well. And so I'm really kind of worried that we are not replacing the forester or we're not actively seeking one. I think we do need a little bit of help in the, you know, green area for us, for the city. So anyway, I just kind of put that out there. I'm not sure what's happening with the forester, but I think we need to hire a forester. Okay, uh, Councilman Fitzpatrick. Just uh, a few things. So one, uh, just to reiterate um, that the, Youth Leadership Commission still needs to be uh, filled, basically. All of the uh, the current, the previous commissioners were uh, displaced because of school or um, 
their terms expired during COVID and we weren't able to go out and seek new applicants for those positions. So if anyone knows any young people between the ages of 16 and 22 Michigan City residents from uh, both high schools and they can be representatives of multiple community organizations to, to serve on, on the commission, please submit your application to the clerk's office so uh, we can get get back uh, on with that. And I, I will be working out, uh, working uh, reaching out to the uh, necessary organizations to see if they have any specific candidates of, of their own in mind to to represent their group. So, uh, and um, another point is, so we've got this these funds coming in from the federal government, and, and it's a considerable amount. And I think it would do this city, I mean, uh, a lot of good. The the issue I take with is is under the current lack of leadership because Dwayne Perry is not the leader. Uh, he, he's holding a spot that is should be suited for someone else that is more capable of relating to the 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 needs and concerns and just the the overall temperament of the people of this city. Uh, I, I wish there was some way we could work on. Uh, maybe holding this over to the next administration or seeing what what provisions could be made to postpone any major decisions. I know that some of them are already have outlined deadlines. So I guess we're, we're kind of uh, bound by those, but I, I think we should definitely look into postponing some of these major decisions and some of these major disbursements of these funds. I mean, if it's something that we have to wait till 2023 or 2024, uh, the, the money will still be the same. I mean, maybe adjust a little bit for the inflation, but the funds will still get put to great use and they will still be able to make this community better without having the, the stain of uh, what we're dealing with right now. And just lastly, Dwayne Perry needs to resign. You, you should resign. Man up. You know, you didn't man up when it was time to deal with Chief Campbell because, I mean, the manly thing to do would was to, you know, if 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 it was your desire to have a different police chief, that's your prerogative as mayor. You don't have to try to use some lame excuse to to remove somebody that you have the the actual authority to move. Say you're going to take the police department in a different direction and move on. That would have been the manly thing to do. Uh, when you're saying that you're sorry and you want to take these sensitivity trainings. I don't think there's anything you can learn. You may learn how to hang up your phone when you're done leaving a voice message, but as far as changing who you are as a person, I find it hard to believe. And the way you look at ministers or people that look like me in general, it, it, it it's just, it, it infuriates me to think that you still have the right to sit in that seat where you represent, you know, upwards of 10,000 African-American people in this community and think you can do it with your head held high. You, you should be ashamed of yourself. You probably, you're bringing shame on your family. You're bringing shame on the people that work for you. You're bringing shame on us for having to deal with you and having no further recourse. It, it's just deplorable at this point. You should, you should look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, are you doing the right thing? And if you are, you should definitely, definitely need, you need to seek more than just sensitivity training. You should probably seek some therapy. I don't know if it's for, uh, financial reasons why you can't vacate this position or if some just just some moral thing that you have where you you you, you think you're too good to resign the manly thing would be to resign I mean if if you want to man up and prove to us that you are uh worth redeeming and and you can bring yourself back from this then you would do the right thing right now the longer you stay when when the sentiment is that you should go it proves that you're not sorry it proves that you're not equipped to do this uh i could go on forever but I, i'm not going to because i'm pretty sure there's other things to be discussed but i just had to put that out there and i will be saying this every meeting so it, it's probably going to be cliche after the next two or three but it, it's my position and i'm not moving thank you Councilwoman Dyke. Um, a couple of things. So um, uh, the the American Rescue um, money, um, I I think the the council should own what happens to that money, and we should take credit for the money and how we distribute it to the community. Um, I understand Councilman Fitzpatrick's uh, sentiments, but 
this is an opportunity for us to lead and not worry about the mayor and do what's right for the city. Um, I know that we received a, a correspondence. I'm not going to read it right now from um, Robin Serber. She didn't get it in in time, but I do want to uh, read just a, a line from it, even though it will be read in its entirety at the next meeting. Um, you know, she st she said, you stated, you, you know, during your meeting with the pastors that the training and counseling you are taking is something that needs to be done alone behind closed doors. And she disagreed. And I consider myself a diversity professional and I, I totally agree with her. Um, you know, behind closed doors for what? I mean, you, he should be reporting out on what he learned because I don't think he's learned anything. The, count, the, the training that has been talked about, um, you know, first of all, he's not um, going to, he's utilizing free, you know, self-paced learnings um, that aren't conversational. He's not having an honest conversation about race at all with anybody. Just getting on a... a, a you know, video or a Zoom call saying, I'm sorry. You only started saying sorry once you got caught. Once he got caught, he started saying sorry. I want him to have a dialogue about race. I want to see a dialogue about race and what that means. And for him to sit there and take it, um, take the the criticism and, and, and share with us what he meant, what he's learned, and, and how he's going to move forward, but he should, he should resign. I, I totally agree that he should resign. You know, we're sitting here watching, you know, Laporte, um, you know, you know, just, they're just, they're moving and shaking. You know why? Because people respect the mayor over there. They don't respect this mayor. So now we're spending our time working around him to get things done. When, you know, we're sitting here and he was, disrespectful in that letter, as Councilman Don Prisbalinski said. He was very disrespectful to us and our integrity and what we stand for here as a council. We represent, we all, we received more votes than he did. So, uh, you know, it, it is interesting that his 1,649 votes, he thinks that He's really, really representing the city. So I, I think it's appalling and, and it's a disgrace. Um, but on a lighter note, um, I do want to, let me defer, let me do like um, Councilman Don Prince On a lighter note, um, there's some <laughs> dates that are coming up for scholarships for our students from the city of Michigan City that um, I know May 14th is a deadline for um, the Judy Hoover uh, from the Human Rights, but also from the uh, Williams and Hawkins, you know, Becky Williams and Joe Hawkins scholarship. And, and, and most of us know them, but I, I, I'll tell you this, uh, Becky Williams, and we're coming up on the anniversary of death here in June, uh, was instrumental in making sure that I ended up at a historically black university, Florida a and University. And I am proud of that. And I will say in these times that it's important for our students and um, to understand that there are options for them. Um, also, the Promise Scholarship is coming up um, here in the next few weeks. Also, UNCF. Um, you know, I was able to receive funding to go to school um, to a historically Black college. So there are options for all of our students. Um, so if, if there's any questions, um, I know they're posted on, on the website, eMichigan City. Um, you can also reach out to me on Facebook or most of you who know how to reach me, just shoot me a text or, or a message on Messenger. But um, let's get these scholarships in. I know that uh, COVID has been hard on the seniors and I know that... Um, they're not as engaged in getting the scholarships in this year. And uh, so there, there's been a, a slowdown on people applying for scholarships. And, and if, if you need help, you know, just reach out to, there's several of us on here that can help you with scholarships. So uh, come on students, I know you're graduating and it's been a rough year, but we're rooting for you. And uh, there's some money out there for you to get. So appreciate it.
Thank you, uh, Ms. Nelson. Uh, Paul and I had a nice little joke going on between us. Uh, but Paul, I'm going to call on Gene because Gene had his hand up before uh, before our little joke. So, Mr. Simmons, uh, you've got the floor. Yes, yeah, so I would also like to address the mayor and his letter that was very disrespectful as far as the council goes. Uh, it to me, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, why why are you running around town apologizing and taking training if you don't really sincerely uh, believe that you've done nothing wrong? And that's basically what he's saying. Uh, being this, it, it, then he's only doing it to appease uh, and to make the negative thoughts and feelings about him go away. We know that. <clears throat> His letter basically says that he is being disingenuous, genuous to both the council and the community he served, uh, which is a real problem. We've experienced this playbook before. Deny, deny, deny. We, we know that playbook. Uh, we need a leader who genuinely cares, uh, cares about his community, the folks who live in his community, uh, one who can be trusted and, and people believe in, uh, someone that can bring the city uh, together and move us forward. Uh, and you're right, Ange, uh, Laporte is doing a great job over there, and we need someone to bring us all together and to lead us in the right direction uh, and stop going around making all these false accusations, and that's what he's doing. He's just, he's just playing games with us. Uh, and like, and like uh, Angie and Don said, on a lighter note, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the uh, uh, men and women of the Michigan City Police Department who, are, who was just recently promoted. Uh, we had a lot of officers promoted. Uh, and these promotions uh, was a result of the retirements of Captain uh, Mark Swistak and Lieutenant Kenny Drake. And, uh, just so there's no confusion on the public, Chief Swistek's merit rank was a captain. So when he vacated, when he left and retired, he vacated that captain position, which gave a lot of opportunity for younger officers to move up. Uh, and I just want to take this time to congratulate all those officers. Don't want to go through all the names, but Congratulations. I get to our department too. Paul, Paul Prisminski. Paul, you're on. Thank, th thank you, uh, Councilman, Pre Council President Mack. Um, I have a, a few items. Uh, one, number one is I wanted to know if the uh, park department is got their program together for Washington Park because I had a couple phone calls that it was kind of packed this this last weekend. Um, so if, if anybody from the park department can get with us, it'd be appreciated because I, you know, it's like almost uh, to Memorial Day. Um, also, on the note of uh, repaving streets, now there was a uh, note uh, circular put out by the engineering department that uh, the, the project of the Cleveland Ave or Cleveland Road, whichever way you want to talk about it, was submitted on the base of the will of the Streets and Alley Committee. Now, 
We did not take a vote on that. There was discussion at that meeting. So whoever came up, I'd like to find out who gave the okay to go ahead with that project because it sure wasn't us. Now there was, there was, I will grant, there was a lot of discussion about that road, but I think that there's more to it um, than just a simple paving job over there. But also I will say this, that <clears throat> the estimated cost, estimated cost is 1.4 million. The Redevelopment Commission is going to put in 250. And then on the note, it says here, Council will put in 450. You know what I think? I think those figures should be the other way around so that there's 250 left <clears throat> or 200 left in the uh, MVH fund. If you want to talk about apples and oranges, so there's money left to do neighborhood paving. Because see what, what my focus is, every time you take away from that, I want everybody to know this in the general public, every time you take away from that MVH fund, you take away from getting any, doubling your money for neighborhood paving. And that's, something that you should all be looking at because of the PACER report on these roads. And you got to understand that that PACER report is going on, I think, three or four years old. So now that you have a street that is a three, you have three more years on it. So now it's getting almost to a one. So next time we get together, Get you get yourself a map or a report and look what's going on here. <laughs> We're heading into disaster on these roads. So now I uh, want to talk about the memo put out by the controller's office about electronic deposit. Well, isn't that a surprise? They had a meeting with somebody at the state and found out how to use that program. Amazing. So, as far as I'm concerned, that uh, I think that says something what's going on here. That people don't even know how to use their programming tools and uh, on my I'm not saving the best for last because I'm still requesting an exec session on the Bloxham property I want to know where they're at I want to know if they are suing Bloxham I want to know these things because that is one valuable piece of property on the creek line and I would hate to lose that I would for the development of the north end think about what I'm saying here for the development of the north end that is a valuable tool in the uh northern northern triangle so in I also agree what everyone has said here tonight about the game that's being played, the slap in the face. And as Gene said, deny, deny, deny. Donnie hit a uh, hit the thing. So it, it's very discourag discouraging to to see <laughs> what's going what what went on, what went on here so but we need we didn't talk about what really happened that the mayor signed it and then left and came back 2 days later i don't know who advised them to veto it because it was like okay well you signed it originally so i think you know this is a this is a 
heck of a storyline, and I'm not making light of it. it. It's not a good story. You're, you guys are, have hit a lot of, lot of meat and potatoes tonight on this discussion, and I will say that, or I will also agree that are we gonna be like this for? three years or two years that all this stuff's happening in Laporte and uh, something's got to give. Something's got to give. So I thank you for your time and, and listening. But um, I hope we can get it. We really need an exec session with the, uh, with the Redevelopment Commission. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Councilwoman Tracy Tillman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, real brief, um, Councilman Paul Prisbalinski, you pointed out something I was going to um, uh, address as well um, regarding the veto. Um, so thank you for elaborating on that of how when it was actually signed by the mayor and then a couple of days later, it was then vetoed. I also wanted to touch bases on something that um, Councilwoman Deitch mentioned in regards to Robin Serber's um, correspondence that was sent in. And it was pertaining to um, what type of training is he undertaking? Well, on March 25th of 2021, I attended the, um, the Lee Seminar, uh, Let's Keep Moving, Crucial Conversations, Diversity and Inclusion, um, put on by Purdue Northwest, and Mayor Perry was in attendance. So I just wanted to say that there was opportunities for Q and A. Um, almost all the topics, questions, or concerns that women have experienced in their workplace. Um, was things that I experienced and that others have experienced as well working within the city, but there was no feedback, no response, no, no questions or anything where the mayor had the opportunity to ask questions or to chime in, and it didn't happen. So my question is, not knowing who was going to be on this um, seminar, there was no, no interactions uh, presented by the mayor on that day. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, comments from the council? Any other comments of the council? Okay, I will close it out by just double, uh, doubling the comments of uh, Councilman President on the uh, MC Great Cleanup. They've got a Facebook page. You can see a lot of people doing a lot of things uh, and I take my son to work at Walmart pretty much five days a week. And, and I see these people out there uh, picking up and cleaning. It's an outstanding piece of teamwork that they've got going here in the city. And we need that. Got my shot today. You guys go get yours. I'm feeling a little bit, but it's not that bad. Uh, parents have theirs. My whole family got theirs. Second one coming up. And my last thing I just wanted to mention is the uh, that AR, uh, ARP, the American Rescue Plan again. That's $8 million and this is more for the public, that we have to spend in three months, that we have to allocate. Now, we must come up with the ordinance. What's been done so far, it's kind of irrelevant. It's, it's a tool in order to get that money from them to us. We must come up with an ordinance that strongly expresses our desires on where we want this money to go and what our priorities are. That's us. And we're gonna have at least two meetings with the public. So when I say us, not just us, the council, the city, um, and we're gonna find out what our priorities are uh, and we're gonna push to fund those priorities. Uh, my second point on that, and it was, I'm still just gonna talk about this American Rescue, uh, American Rescue Plan, is uh, we may be able to do it all. After everybody discusses their ideas for helping the children, helping the schools, doing this and that in the sewers, it might not even come up to 16 million. Uh, hopefully we can have these discussions uh, and, and not get too negative with them until we find out the math. Uh, we may be able to have it all. 
There's a lot of things we need and a lot of things we desire, and we might be able to do it all. Um, my uh, third point is uh, we should be coordinating with uh, other agencies. The city got 16.5 million. The county got a lot more than that. I forget the dollar amount. Michigan City Area Schools themselves got 20 something million. So there's a lot of money that went to a lot of places. We're not in a vacuum. We should be trying to coordinate and maximize these dollars. And this is where cooperation with other entities comes in. Uh, uh, you know, you, you lose when you try to shoot the ball yourself all the time. Uh, and uh, my last point, these are gonna be long and difficult conversations ahead. We need Michigan City's best and brightest to step up uh, and, and assist in coming up with good solutions and good things uh, for the betterment of our people, uh, because that's what this plan was primarily for, the people um, that, that actually suffered from COVID, that actually couldn't pay their bills, that actually you know, had childcare issues and still have them, and are still dealing with the repercussions of uh, losing jobs and things like that. We need to try to find ways to get money to those people. And uh, that's, that's gonna be my angle of this. If you wanna see an example of how it works, this is Seattle. Just Google, uh, Seattle starts the ball rolling on a process to sort out the plan. Uh, it's one city, uh, it's, it's extremely liberal, of course, but uh, if you wanna look at some wording, wording and some verbiage of a city that's actually done it already, we can take that, use Michigan City language, and start a template. And now we go forward with that. So public councilmen, uh, please take a look at that article and uh, look at the template that they've already designed for their city. And uh, we can use that to move forward. We've got a great opportunity here. And uh, mayor or not, I, I, you know, and I, I agree with all the sentiments on the mayor, all of them but I do not want to do anything but take this and uh, slam dunk this situation. We can really do a lot of good for the people here in a short amount of time. Uh, with that said, I will make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, folks. Good night. Aye.